Hi, sixth graders. We are on the properties lesson of the order of operations unit. Our learning target is being able to identify properties from mathematical expressions and to be able to use properties to solve problems. So remember to label the top of your paper with properties and the unit that we're on. So we want to think about what does it mean or look like to have equivalent expressions. So we know that if we do 1 plus 4, what's wrong with my pen, which equals 5 is the same as me doing 4 plus 1. So that means they're in a different order, but they're the same expression and they're equivalent which means equal. So a property, and this is something that you probably want to write down, is basically it means a general rule that we're going to follow when we are working with expressions and equations or it's a characteristic of an operation or a number. But if you just write property and then a rule that we follow. And then these are some vocabulary words that you are going to need to know and we will talk about them as we go through this video. So distributive property. You would want to write this down. You don't need to write the definition, but it basically means to multiply a sum by a number, multiply each add of the sum by the number outside the parentheses. So they, these examples you would want to write down. So as you can see for this one, when I multiply 3 times 4 plus 6 in parentheses, I'm distributing out my 3 to the 4 and to the 6, and instead I'm multiplying 3 times 4 and 3 times 6. And then if we look at it backwards, the 5 is being multiplied by a 7 and the 5 is being multiplied by a 3, so we can combine our 7 and 3 and add them together and multiply it by 5. So let's do this one together and then I'm going to have you do some on your own. So 6 times 3 plus, four, 3 plus 4 in parentheses. We obviously know, because we've been learning order of operations, that we would go 3 plus 4, which is 7, and then multiply by times 6. But when we get to larger problems, it's easier, or it's good to know the different properties to help us um, men use our mental math skills to solve it. So the way we're going to use the distributive property is we are going to do 6 times 3, and then whatever operation is in the middle of the parentheses, we keep that, and then we do 6 times 4. So up here, they wrote it with parentheses, and I'm just writing it out um, like multiplication. And then we would solve 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, 18 plus 24 is, I know that 24 plus 20 is 44, and then subtract 2, and I would get 42. I don't know what's wrong with this pen. All right, I would like you to try these next two, so pause me and then come back and check your work. So I would write this as 2 multiplied by 2 plus 5. And then when I evaluate, I would do 2 plus 5 is 7 times 2, so 2 times 7, and I get 14. And then here I would do 9 times 5 plus 9 times... Ah. And then 9 times 5 is 45, plus 9 would be 54. 
Okay, how can using the distributive property help you to be more efficient and more confident in your problem solving? So let's look at this example. The Tour de France is a cycling race through France that lasts 22 days. If a cyclist averages 90 miles per hour, about how far does he travel? So basically what we would need to do is 90 times 22 which in our head that is pretty tricky to do but I can break up 22 into smaller numbers or it's easier numbers and then I would be able to do it in my head so I could do 90 times 20 plus 2 and then I would know that I would do 90 times 20 plus 90 times 2 90 times 20, 9 times 2 is 18, and then add both of my zeros. So 1,800 plus, and then 9 times 2 is 18, and add my zero. So 180, 1,800 plus 180 would be 1,980 miles. A lot of miles, and I was able to do that without using a calculator and then we would put our label all right I would like you to pause and write down these three properties and just write the example for each so commutative property which you've know you've probably already learned just means that with addition and multiplication you can flip them around and they're still the same associative property is Again, we can um, not necessarily flip them around, but we can change the order that we add or subtract. And then identity means that if we add anything to zero, it stays the same. And if we take a number and multiply it by one, it stays the same. So let's give a couple examples. So commutative property, we, would, we could do... 4 plus 1 equals 1 plus 4, because we know that 5 equals 5. We could also do 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2, because we know that 6 equals 6. Associative property, we could do 1 plus 2 plus Three, and I could put parentheses there and then I could change my parentheses and do my parentheses between my or outside of my two and three so then I would have one plus two is three plus three equals six and then here I have three plus two is five plus one equals six identity property of one just tells me that when I multiply anything by 1, it stays that number. So 5 times 1 equals 5. And identity of 0 tells me that if I add something to 0, it also stays the same. That is something you probably want to have done with those examples. Okay, so now I would like you to pause me and try and see if you can figure out which property goes with each of these expressions. So this one right here is going to be the commutative property because we changed the order of the numbers that we're adding. This one right here is going to be the distributive property because we distributed out our 4 into the 5 and to the 7. This one right here is none of the properties that we talked about. If it was 5 plus 0 equals 5, then it would be the identity property. Oops. But otherwise, this would be none that we talked about. 16 equals 1 times 16 would be the identity property of 1. And then this one right here, down here, would be... 
Okay, so now we're going to look at a couple problems that we can solve mentally just by changing the order of how we um, compute it. So if you look at 4 times 12 times 25 and, and, and try to do that in our head mentally, I can change it around because it's pretty easy for me to do 4 times 25, which is 100, and then times it by 12. 100 times 12 would be 12 and then add the two zeros. So if I look at this one right down here, 40 times 7 times 5, if I do 40 times 5, well this is better with this pen, I should have done that earlier. 4 times 5 is 20, and then I add the extra 0, it's 200, and then I can do 200 times 7, and 2 times 7 is 14, and then keep the two zeros and I get 1,400. A lot easier than trying to do 40 times seven in my head and then seven, or and then multiply that times five or even with 40 times 35. It's a lot easier to break it up into numbers that we can easily do. And then for this one, 89 plus 15 plus one, if I add 1 to 90, it's a lot easier for me to add things to. So 89 plus 1 would be 90 plus 15, and then I would get 105. This is the summary of properties and examples on it, and I have a little sheet that I will give you in class tomorrow, so you do not need to write all of these down, but I would like you to look them over and make sure that you understand each one. And that is all that I have for you, so make sure that you go back and um, rewatch anything that you don't understand, and make sure you have your notes for class tomorrow. Have a good evening.